Welcome, welcome very, very much to Conversation Where It's a delight and a pleasure to welcome to the program one of my very dearest, dearest, dearest friends and colleagues, and that being Dr. Norton Mazinski. And Norton, we've done a number of programs with you in the past, but welcome very, very much to Conversations, and it's so good to see you in this uh, February cold day. Harold, thank you, and it's always a pleasure to be here with you. We've done it many a time. And uh, we've so done good. it many times, and, and I always look forward to it. Yeah, and we always have. And I want you, if you could, you've got a lot going. You, you're a distinguished professor for a long career up in Connecticut. You're a scholar. Elmer Berger was an associate of yours and others that were major figures in the intellectual community. But share just a little bit of your own background. Not a long time. I know you had a very interesting roommate in undergraduate uh, life. But your own background a little bit, and then we want to get into discussion in the Middle East, some of Syria, also some religious issues that are of relevance to understanding the political and reality uh, uh, realities of that part of the reason. But a little of your own background, uh, please. Well, very briefly. Very briefly. Uh, uh, I was uh, born and raised in Iowa. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, um, uh, I was the uh, first uh, Jewish boy born in Red Oak, Iowa. And uh, my father had to bring the person to do the circumcision. They brought him from Omaha, and <laughs> my father invited the whole town yeah. because there was because it was the first Jewish family in town. Yes, right. And my father invited the whole town to the bris or yeah. to the circumcision. Yeah. So uh, at uh, uh, the next day, yeah. the town newspaper had headlines: first Jewish boy born in Red Oak. So uh, that's how I started. But it didn't have first for Jewish boy uh, with the circumcision, or not? Uh, well, no, uh, they talked about that. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. So anyway. What do you uh, call it? A moy? A uh, mo who does that? A moil. A moil does it. Already. That's a very good. Already. Well, they had to bring the moil yes. to do the job. <laughs> <laughs> from Omaha, from Omaha. Which you In fact, an uncle of mine went to Omaha and drove him to Red Oak. Island. Right, and if you wouldn't need a moil if the baby was a goyle. Uh, no, use Brooklyn. Uh, I, we're no, getting our, we're getting no, all mixed no. up with our and, languages. And actually, no. um, uh, the religious Jews yes, have right. a moil. Yeah. Uh, many others who have circumcision, mm. they have a doctor do mm. the circumcision. Yeah, right, right, right. But for religious Jews, mm. that's not kosher. Must have been a bit a little lonely to be the only Jew in town or something like that. No, or different actually, than being in New York, me, where every other talk person about is that Jewish. For a Mm. We lived in Red Oak, but when I was a year old, we moved to Ames, Iowa, and that's where I grew up. College. Now, when I went to, let me talk about this okay. background. Right. I was, my father was a very religious Jew, yeah. and everybody in town knew it, mm. and my father became the patron saint of the town for right. lots of reasons. Really? And when I went to grade school, as we called it, or primary school, yeah. and then to junior high school, yeah. and then into high school, yeah. I was the only Jewish student, and I must tell you yeah. that if I had to choose, uh -huh. uh, if, I, if I could start over yeah. and choose how I would grow up yeah. and where I would grow up, yeah. I would choose that same thing. My see. father had someone drive me from five years old to 18 yeah. to Des Moines three times a week wow. to study uh, 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 Judaism and Jewish history with a private teacher. Right. So I had that. But, you, but by the uh, time I got to high school, yeah. the person who drove me every day was my very best friend in Ames, Iowa, named Dewey Fitch, who was not Jewish, uh, and he loved driving me. Yeah. I grew up in that kind of atmosphere. Yeah, right. And so uh, if I had, as I've said already, uh -huh. if I had to do it again, I would do it. That's how, how was it to be uh, a Jew uh, in this kind of environment? It was terrific, uh, and I must say that my good father, <laughs> yeah. who came from a little town outside of Kiev, uh -huh. and he came uh, over, and Kiev. first he went to St. Louis, yeah. then he went to St. Joe, Missouri, but why did he come to Iowa? The major reason was uh -huh. because he said when he came to the New World, yeah. he wanted to do what he as a Jew was not able to do in the old world where he had to live in a ghetto. Yeah. He wanted to be able to live freely uh -huh. as a religious Jew among non-Jews. Uh -huh. And that was the I, wonderful that was Ames, environment. That there was Ames, are. Iowa, for That's sure. Right. That's what, for that what was a, Ames, what, Iowa. Make a great movie. Right. Well, We're anyway, going to make a hell of a movie. They should it, make a, a listen, major we feature. We just had, Who we being you? my brother mm. and I, yeah. 
two months ago yeah. in Ames, Iowa. My yeah. father died in 1982. Uh -huh. In Ames, Iowa in 2014, mm -hmm. they devoted a whole day mm -hmm. to the memory of Abe Mezvinsky. Uh -huh. They dedicated the day to him, uh -huh. and we had this huge program where people came from all over to talk about how they remembered my father. He was the patron saint of the town. He was the patron saint of the whole for town. A whole, for, of the whole oh, town. for a Not lot of reasons. There was Let's only your about, family is the Jewish part, right? Well, then there were a few others later, yeah, but, I'll, yeah. but I'll, 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 I'll tell you why. Okay. He became a successful businessman. Yeah. I have hundreds of these stories. I'll uh, tell you two very quickly. Okay, do okay, it quick. I'll, we I'll, can do it over a beer no, no. later. Okay. The, no, no. the whole long one, trail. Listen, yeah, yeah, yeah. one day he came home and said he had to go to the bank because mm. a bank manager called him. Mm. And then he came home and told us why. Uh. The bank manager said, listen, Abe, that was his name. <laughs> he said, tomorrow the mm. state bank examiner is coming, mm. and he looks at all the loans we have, mm. and we have some loans to people who don't have enough collateral, uh. and he's going to tell us to draw mm. that in. Yeah. And he said, I don't want to. Mm. So he said, Abe, if you would co-sign those, right. and if the state bank examiner <laughs> sees the name Abe Mezvinsky, then they're fine. My father said... I'll do it on one condition. What was the what, condition? What? You cover up all the names so I do it anonymously <laughs> and I don't know who I'm doing it for. That's a leadership quality now, there, Now, man. I yeah. have hundreds of yeah. those stories. Yeah. So you can see why yeah. he became a patron. No saint. wonder he now, so anyway, What I, a rich tradition. No wonder you came I up grew so... Up in you Iowa, ended up so well. Grew up in Iowa. Yeah. Uh, then I became an academic for a variety of reasons, a historian. I taught in Connecticut for 43 years. Yes, distinguished. I only, I, that's right. I yeah. only retired mm. because I had the chance to be the president of a new Middle East think tank in Washington. That's right. Called the International Council for Middle East Studies. Right. Uh -huh. And for the last three to four years, mm -hmm. that's what I've done. And I've spent my time between New York and Washington. Yeah. Uh -huh. We have a wonderful group, and we do wonderful things. I know you got a lot going on down there. You're living in the Georgetown or the area in the Georgetown area. It's in the Georgetown area. area. Do you count that like a home, or is that an office, or how how do you no, see it? No, we're in. You're, we, you're 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 by. We fortunately we fortunately but. are housed in a wonderful place called the International Law Institute in Washington, which is yeah. in Washington, which is extremely prestigious, right. and so on. And the chairman of the International Law Institute, Don Wallace, is also the chairman of our board of directors. Good. So we luckily can be housed. And there. you're you're writing and thinking and provide and, and involving in the New York. In the, there's a lot going on in Washington. Yeah, a lot we're of, doing we, a lot we, of stuff we, going on. Yeah, we plan programs where uh, our mission is educational, uh -huh. and we also have book projects. Yeah, and. Uh, we have very good scholars and a few leading politicos that are our, our directors. you got a lot of directors. politicos in the in general environment of Washington. That's right. Yeah, and and so, but we have very good scholars, yeah. and we're Middle East oriented, uh -huh. and that's what we do. Okay, well, that's all background. We didn't get into your roommate at college and everything like that. We could well, do that. We've done we, that on another that, occasion. No, okay. That was Gene Wilder. That yeah, was, the that, that's writer. right. Yeah, it, anyway. His so, name being his. It, w what in, was his name when then? We, in college? Yeah, you were roommate. Jerry Silverman. J Jerry Silverman. From yeah. Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Gene Wall, one of the best. One of the best, right. most funny guys. <laughs> Blazing Saddles lives one forever. One summer, we went mm. to Europe together, and mm. I have these great pictures yeah. of us in Europe together. Yeah, right. Okay, now, down to the thing. We were talking about what we're going to talk about, and there's a lot going on in that area of the world that you paid particular attention to, the Middle East, including, uh, you know, Syria. Uh, you've had a lot of connection with Syria yes, and so forth, had, and it might be had. worthwhile trying to talk because there's a lot going on now in Syria and Israel always is a focal point in terms of that part of the world. Maybe we could well, just talk, talk briefly a about, about all right. Let's yeah. uh, let's start with Syria. And then I would briefly. like to get over into some of the questions of religious importance. We'll do that as we talk. Informs when we, the whole thing. When we talk about Israel Palestine. Okay, but, good. All right. Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, the situation in Syria is terribly ho is horrible. It seems, yeah. and this uh, fighting and killing yeah. started in March 2011. Right. So now it's uh, three years old, uh -huh. and it's getting worse. And the the reports, the last reports were here 
that there had been 135 to 150,000 killed, but the number is probably up closer to 200,000. Really? And Syria had a population of maybe 21 to 22 to 23 million yeah. when this started, mm -hmm. and there are an estimated 10 million refugees. Yes, 10 right. million, yeah. 6 or 7 million Spreading are outside out the borders yeah. uh, in other countries. The yeah. others are displaced from within. Yeah. There is killing and shooting and fighting going on every day. Uh -huh. Civilians are being killed. Yeah. It's horrible. Some areas, if I take Aleppo, uh, yeah. there are two major cities. Yeah. The two major cities in Syria, as you know, are Damascus right. and Aleppo. Yeah. Aleppo is, uh, is being almost fully destroyed. Um, really? But it's the killing and the suffering of the people, wonderful people, uh, most civilians, and actually uh, they are being oppressed and killed. And yes, that's happening uh, on the, uh, uh, the uh, people who are doing this are on the Assad government side, but they also happen to be uh, on the side of, of the ones in opposition to Assad. Yeah. Because right now the estimate is there are uh, maybe up to 130 to 140 diverse groups in opposition. Many of those groups uh -huh. are uh, they're positively inclined. They are positive, but many others are the most negative kinds of groups who have been responsible for the oppression of civilians, just as the government forces have been responsible for oppression. So there's a good deal to say about where all the blame lays. It, it lies on all sides, but mm. the most distressing thing is that instead of the situation getting better, or instead of our being able to see uh, in the near future some kind of resolution, things are getting worse, mm. and resolution is right now not in sight. Uh -huh. And even though there have been recent meetings of some groups and of other nations uh -huh. to try to do anything about it, yeah. still uh, 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 that hasn't really helped. How do we account for this thing? It started at uh, Tunis and then it went to the Arab Spring, this kind of thing. There was something blowing in the wind. What well, is it that where it landed well, in Syria? It had been relatively peaceful and calm, all things considered. There had been involvement with Israel, uh, animosity. Why is this uh, business breaking out, and what is the cause of this breaking out in so many different places in that part of the oh. world at this time? Well, in your estimation, there Dale, are well. Let's take it's the, a big the issue. let's yeah. take the the Middle East. Yeah. And yes, this term was used, the Arab Spring, for revolts that broke out in different places. Right now. In one regard, uh, those places are distinct, and so uh, some of the specific causes are far different. And I'll come back to Syria in a minute. Okay. In another way, we can say, well, in these places where this broke out, there were, for the most part, autocratic governments, terribly autocratic governments that in many ways uh, oppressed and restricted much of the population. And finally, there was an uprising and a revolt in many places, Egypt being a major example, but not the only example, right. uh, Tunisia being another one, of, of, of younger people and some that were not so young. Yeah. And so actually there were explosions above the surface. Now, and then we had revolts and we've had trouble and the hope has been mm -hmm. and still is yeah. that uh, in time mm -hmm. there will be better governments, better societies for the majority of the people. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, it, we ha that hasn't worked that way mm -hmm. very well at all. Now, mm -hmm. uh, yet. Now, if I come to Syria, because mm -hmm. we were talking specifically about Syria, yeah. well, the, I, I, of course, in a sense, I'm overgeneralizing, yeah. but there's still the point to it. Yeah. Before the current president, uh -huh. Bashar Assad, uh -huh. came into office in 2000 uh -huh. to 2001, uh -huh. his father, Hafez Assad, yeah. was the ruler for, for 25 years. Yeah. All right. He's an now, ally. now, he was an Alawite, which is a minority Islamic sect. Right. Uh, that uh, is a problem in a sense, but it not only was he an Alawite, but the Alawites were the ones who were also in control 
of the military. But the point is, Hafez Assad was also a terribly authoritarian leader. Mm -hmm. There were many things about Syria in terms of the government that uh, were uh, better than in other places, yeah. but there were many things that were not. Uh, uh, he, he didn't put up with um, uh, 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 controversy being directed against him. Mm. He uh, didn't uh, come along with uh, trying to support rights of the people as much as he should. Mm. Hafez Assad uh, died. Bashar Assad came to power, didn't even want to be the president. Right, yeah, he he was trained, he, no, ophthalmologist. Uh, that's right. He I went to England, medical, yeah. trained as an ophthalmologist, yeah, right. wanted to come back to Damascus mm -hmm. to practice yeah. uh, ophthalmology. Uh, uh, he was talked into becoming president. Mm -hmm. When he became president, there was hope that he would bring about some of the necessary reforms, economic reforms and other reforms. Unfortunately, that did not happen, or let's put it this way, it didn't happen nearly to the extent that it should have happened. And so, finally, we had, by March 2011, mm -hmm. we had a revolt that broke out mm -hmm. that at first was a revolt mostly of people who said, look, we haven't had the rights that we should have fully. Uh -huh. We should have more reform mm -hmm. and so on. Right. But then it grew and then we had some people who uh, were far more extreme, and they had been underground yeah, yeah. within Syria, who wanted an extreme Islamic state that would be oppressive to others. Uh -huh. They came in to fight against Assad. Uh -huh. And then we had a good many elements, a good many groups, a good many people come in from other places, right. from Iraq and so on. Uh -huh. We had Al-Qaeda connected groups. Well, yeah. We had groups that were even more extreme than Al-Qaeda. Uh -huh. And so they make up now a substantial part I'm not saying a majority, we don't know for sure, yeah. but a substantial part of the opposition to Assad, uh -huh. and they're the ones who have uh, acquired more military equipment uh -huh. than others in opposition. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. They don't have enough equipment to fight successfully against Assad, uh -huh. but they have been every bit as vicious and every bit as oppressive to the civilians in many ways as the Assad government uh -huh. has been. Uh -huh. And so, unfortunately, the majority of the people, the great majority, who are wonderful people, yeah. they've been oppressed in all these different directions. And the other sad thing is Syria, of all the states in the Middle East, all the Arab states in the Middle East, yeah. Israel being separate, it's not really an Arab state, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, except we'll get to that. Yeah, we're, we're going to talk about but, that in some detail. But yeah. it, Syria was the greatest mosaic. By the greatest mosaic, by the uh, I mean the following. It had all of the known significant Islamic sects represented. It had 27 different Christian groups. Christians, wow. they were a minority. Uh -huh. Actually, up until, well, this is already uh, 40 years ago, 30 to 40 years ago, it had a small but a substantial Jewish community, and those Jews uh, were able to prosper. So it was a real mosaic. Yeah. Um, culturally advanced. Culturally advanced, yeah, yeah. but there you are. Uh -huh, uh -huh, so yeah. now it's, it's just, so I'm saying there are things that are unique in a sense about the Syrian situation, yeah, but there's a general thing about uh, opposition uh, to autocratic rule. And opposition to autocratic rule is what was generally the case and has been, yeah. still is. Still, it seems to me, if I may, it's been East. autocratic rule has been more or less the case throughout all of human history. There's a one group after another, realpolitik, would give control and that sort of thing. It even applied in a certain sense, in certain sensings, particularly after 2008 in the United States, we had an Occupy movement. We have people who are saying the system has very serious flaws. And it is true, humanity, there are systems, there are feelings stirring in the humanity that there's something new that is possible that isn't contained or given or delivered by the established institutional structures, varying degrees, a little bit of difference and so forth in each of the various 
geographical or political entities, but that's something that's stirring planet Earth uh, writ large, don't you well, think, or is it? Or do you think? Is it a time of awakening that is uh, sensed by human consciousness and so forth, by the zeitgeist of well, the spirit it, well, of the Well, it age? does seem that we have an awakening in many parts of the world. The yeah. Middle East is a prime example. Yeah. It's not the only place. Look, yeah. we've just had, we're in the midst mm. of this in the Ukraine right now. Yeah, Ukraine, and we there certainly it is have had it throughout parts of Africa. And, it, and it, we it, certainly have had it in Latin, and, Latin America. Yeah. And I would say and we certainly it, and it had exists. it also in some ways in East Asia. And I also think it exists at a level that may be really more significant than a lot of people think in the United States well, of America. Well, uh, it, uh, yeah, it not of stirring, the same ill quite no, yet. But no, well, we've got a little bit more uh, advanced kind of ways of uh, uh, tamping down. Or, subver or or co-opting, that kind of thing. Well, the but other it's thing there. is, it's loose yeah, among a lot the other of thing is that as much, uh, I think as much criticism as we can make and should make uh -huh. of our country here, right. uh, we are still far better in many, many ways, especially if we're going to talk within the area of, of human rights. Yeah. We're still, with all of our problems, right. We're still far better uh -huh. than many, many other parts of the I world. I think that was always the case. I think Rome probably was better. They had bad problems and so forth when they were ruling up in Germania and all that, and they were probably advanced from Hadrian's. Ta uh, I mean, at this, uh, the, you know, the capital of the center of the power structures that have existed throughout history. Probably there was somewhat improvement in terms of the context that existed at that time. Uh, England was probably better than most of the countries that they were colonizing around the world in the English Empire. Uh, the King's Castle was better than what the peasants lived in. It's always been like that within the human condition. There was a small group who would be running things and having all the control. Things were better near and in association with them. You know, it, it's more or less a pattern that's held throughout almost all of human history, it seems well, to me. Well, and it, it isn't, it, and it can, if you're understanding it historically, then there's no way except there will be a slow, there's a slow advance and everything. But if you're studying it in another context, it's a time of qualitative transformation coming where you have a major qualitative transformation. Well, and that process goes through all of nature and down into mo mo molecular understanding of the universe and so let forth. Let me say two things about that. Okay. One, we hope that there's a qualitative yes. transformation coming. We hope so. Well, we have some indication. We hope so. Mm -hmm. But we can't be absolutely sure. The second thing well, is, wait a, minute. a qualitative change, if I may, there's two qualitative changes this capability of. One is, let's say you're going to have continued slaughtering of people among themselves and everything, or on the large level, you now, we were just discussing before we went on camera, the weapons that existed on hate trigger alert exist among all these people who are fighting over one term or that and everything. The weapons are now, we agree, even in, op yes, they're species uh, lethal for the first yes, time in that's our right. time. We also have a capability that was undreamed of, uh, capable, for seeing a world where there is enough for everybody in a way that there never has been in terms of a historical development well, that is unique. Yes, Harold, but again, we're going to hope that we have positive. So the extremists on the left side, the destructive side, we do not want to let loose the thing that's going to uh, wipe out our species. And we hope. And we ought to liberate it or have an opening upon a way that we're going to liberate the whole thing in a new kind of way, existential. And those things are not available to us in the normal reporting of the news and so on. It's just reified, outdated institutions. Well, we're going, to hope, we're going to hope for the best. The yeah. other thing is, Harold, you and I and all the others, we're human beings. Yeah. And we know that with human beings, mm. lots yeah. of things have happened. Well, lots of things are happening. Yeah. And lots of things, things were happening. Happen. And we yeah. can't be sure uh -huh. what they're going to be. That's the hell of it. The universe is synergetic. <laughs> we don't know what it is. And maybe we're meant to entropy. 99% uh, of all species have gone extinct. 99.9. Well, so we may be just another species we're going to hope. bound we're, to go extinct. Uh, you know, it could you be. and I and many others mm -hmm. are going to hope that that doesn't happen with uh, our speech, our human beings. But speeches. we ought to live with the realization that this is not your normal historical period. 
When you get to a point where you've got that qualitative change capability, Listen, you that, that that should be on the minds yes. of everybody, including Listen, our leadership. That is on both the positive sector and the vector Harold, and the negative sector. Harold, that's and, correct. Uh -huh. But perhaps we can say that we never really know whatever a normal situation would be. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, I yeah, also yeah. am reminded of something else. Yes, sir. When I was in graduate school, yeah. I remember that um, I studied uh, some with a very distinguished European historian yeah. who, who refused. He said, I refuse to teach any courses later than 1781 uh -huh. because he said civilization ended in 1781. Now, that we could, well, well, let's not, we would have to spend hours talking about why he said that. <laughs> yeah, right. But right. I'm saying that still, yeah. you see, yeah. so his view was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, he happened to be an expert on that period well, of time. Well, yeah. before, all right, uh, yeah. you know. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, yeah. we don't know, but we're yeah. going to hope for yeah, the best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and also. And we still, I still want to get this in that given all of this and given the problem of. Uh, uh, what we have now with mm -hmm. our capability yeah. of uh, having weapons that could indeed probably destroy uh, all all human beings. Yeah, a good, it's a good possibility. Still, the the and given the way yeah. the world is and has been, mm -hmm. and given all the problems mm -hmm. that we have in this country, mm -hmm. and all the negative things, yeah. we still here are fortunate that we're, we after all are still living in one of the better yeah. of the societies yeah. relative to all of those that we know about in this world. We agree on that, yeah. Okay. I and, and if I may, I would also like to pitch out uh, for the fact that I think we're living in the center of the most interesting part of that uh, being New York City. In fact, I would say Manhattan is maybe the most well, interesting place Well, you and I talked about that before the program, no about how happy both of us are that we live in New York City. And everybody the, in the world is here, yeah. and it's, a, yeah, we've got an open yes, view on well, things. Now, another thing, the solace that people, humanity, has sought, and also fulfilling uh, in philosophical needs and so forth, uh, throughout the ages, uh, 10,000 generations, they seem to tell us we've been. There have been these things that have come to be moral or moorings and so on, ethical and also religious. And so there's a lot of the religious attitudes that have developed uh, as solace and for understanding the larger issues that our self-reflective consciousness gave to them. Did I tell you, Morton, we, Norton, we got a new dog now? Yeah, you told me. You got to come and meet him. He's I, really I, a pistol. I'll, really, I'll good. Do really good. Really I'll good. Really good. I'll do that. But I don't think he's good. He, I don't think he's contemplating the larger issues like what's it all about, Alfie. We don't have I to. I think he's more interested in bones than anything else. We yeah. don't have to talk with him about no. We those won't, we'll take it up. I sometimes wonder. But these issues have been important. Uh, well, from let's use civilization that. and Let in many varied ways, and they have implications Fine. that do import, have import to the political reality. Let right? me suggest that that's a that can be a transition to talk about Israel Palestine a little bit because okay. the religious part is so important. Yes. So, but if we're going to talk about Israel Palestine and that major conflict, which by the way is still. Even with all with the terrible things happening in Syria and the very bad things happening in Egypt mm. and the other things that are a little more positive happening in Tunisia yeah. and in other places where we and in Libya rather bad things. Well, uh, but I, terrible we, we, things. Well, I had great, okay. we still great have, things to say about we still have, market, And with all of the Arab yeah. Spring, yeah. Israel Palestine is still for. The population yeah. throughout the Middle East, or most of it, a major consideration. Uh, for the world, so, I think. For the world. Yeah. So let's go to that a minute. All right, by all Let, means. You've that. studied that and, and let's understand say, it. First well. of all, and you got that, all that good Yiddish training too, or Yiddish training, well, or Judaism. Uh, so you got a good that may, Yeah. Well. <laughs> and then all the time in the university, they had all right, that all, all right. subverted. Well, but anyway, that, go ahead. Maybe, mm. maybe that helps. Yeah. In understanding. It does. No, it all does. Right. Yeah. Now, but look, right now. There is an ongoing uh, attempt mm -hmm. uh, to um, uh, have negotiations mm -hmm. between Israel and the Palestinian leadership headed by Abbas, mm -hmm. part of the, that's just part, representing part Hamas of the Palestinians, also. for peaceful negotiations. There's all this talk about 
a peace process yeah. and there's also talk about solutions mm. well let me just point this out Thank i don't you. like to be a pessimist but but the reality is the reality it, yeah. we are now 20 years mm. past mm -hmm. The Oslo Agreement. Mm -hmm. Not, that was 1993. Yeah. Seems like so, just wait, yesterday. 1993. Yeah. Yeah. So we're a little over 20 years. Yeah. Now, when they had this Oslo uh, meeting, right, right. and then we had the talks after that, that's when we had talks, and that's when this term peace process yeah. went into uh, our uh, uh, general discussion. Yeah, okay. And that's yeah. when we started to have people say, you know, it's only going to be a matter of six months mm, yeah, or one yeah, year or yeah, two years yeah. until we have settled the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Yeah. We're now over 20 years mm -hmm. later, mm -hmm. and instead of settling it, mm -hmm. that conflict is worse. Yeah. Uh, we think, are yeah, yeah, oh it's yeah. far worse. Okay, okay. We we we've had one one emphasis on a peace process after another. Mm -hmm. We've had numerous negotiations, and we it's not correct to say they've gotten nowhere well, yeah. because actually it's worse than ever before. Oh. Let me illustrate uh, what I mean by do. worse yeah. than ever before. Okay, we yeah. now have the population has grown tremendously. Mm -hmm. We now have in the West Bank area mm -hmm. that was captured by Israel in 67, we have over two million Palestinians. In 67, there were uh, maybe three quarters of a million, two million Palestinians. Mm -hmm. In Gaza, which is the other Palestinian era, uh, area, we have one and a half million Palestinians. Right. In Israel itself, we have all, about one and a half million Palestinians who are their citizens, second class citizens. Mm -hmm. All together, mm -hmm. in what is Israel today, uh -huh. since 67, we have about as many Palestinians as we have Israeli Jews. Mm -hmm. And yet, those Palestinians, in different degrees, those Palestinians are oppressed in uh, the West Bank and Gaza as much in the West Bank mm. as they have been all those 20 years yeah. and then some. And in Gaza, they're oppressed far more. And within Israel itself, the one and a half million Palestinians are still second class citizens without, without the rights and the privileges by law that Israeli Jews have, they're worse off than before. Mm -hmm. uh, we now and the have, building goes on in yeah, Jerusalem. We and now yeah, have yeah. in the West Bank, mm -hmm. we now have over 500,000 Jewish settlers. Mm -hmm. Every yeah, month, right, yeah. more Palestinian land is confiscated. Right, right. The settlements are expanding. Mm -hmm. That antagonizes because it oppresses the Palestinians all the more. Mm. I could go on and on so now, yeah. to how bad things are for them over the last 20 years huh? because these people are so oppressed. Mm. Yeah. They also have committed violent acts of terrorism at certain times. Yeah. Uh, not equivalent to the terrorism they've faced, mm. but they've committed terrorist mm. acts against Israeli Jews. That has happened, and uh, we have ups and downs in the amount of uh, that that happens, mm. but things have gotten worse and worse. Uh -huh. There is talk now, there has been talk of a two-state solution, a Palestinian state, West Bank or West Bank Gaza, and then a uh, uh, a so-called Jewish state. Well, yeah, well that's uh, becoming no, a farce. no, no, it is. Uh, 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 it's uh, for a number of reasons. It is. It's a dead letter. It seems it's, to be. Yeah. It is yeah, a dead yeah, letter. Yeah. It is a dead yeah, letter. Yeah, yeah, it yeah, it yeah. is a dead letter. Yeah. We could outline all of the reasons why it's a dead letter. Well, and now how if about we a disparity in power. Uh, well, yes. let, 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 let me let no. me just come finally to this. Oh, okay, then I'll sorry. go to the religion. Yeah, okay, let me come to this. Okay. If we take the most recent statements of Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu of uh, Israel yeah. representing the Israeli government, and he said this again within the last couple of weeks to his cabinet, broadcast around the world. He said it before Congress. He says it all the time. He says this. He said, look, he said, the settlements, and he's really saying what's happening to the Palestinians, that's not the problem. Mm. He said there are only two problems that have to be negotiated, 
Only two. What are they? The security of the state of Israel, uh -huh. not of the Palestinians, mm. security of the state of Israel, and that all the Arabs and all the Palestinians have to accept that Israel is the Jewish state, or the other language he uses is the state of the Jewish people. Mm -hmm. Now, the mm -hmm. point is, mm -hmm. the Palestinians aren't going to do that aren't going to accept that. Mm -hmm. Neither are the Arabs, nor should they, mm -hmm. because if they do, then they're accepting that they, are the indigenous population, mm -hmm. that they are not the state, they're not the population of the state, and they can probably be oppressed even more. Uh -huh. So I'm saying, and the other condition he had is, is the condition that we have to negotiate and guarantee the safety of Israel. Mm -hmm. Well, one could ask, what about the safety of all the Palestinians? Uh -huh. Now, if those are his two negotiating uh -huh. issues, uh -huh. and that's what he wants to do, uh -huh. I'm saying we're, we still are in the position of getting nowhere. Uh -huh. So if one would well, then ask, oh, wait, yeah. if one would then ask, what should be done or what could be done, uh -huh. well, I'm going to suggest not just not only Norton Mesvinsky's suggestion, uh -huh. suggestions of others too. Yeah. Instead of talking about two states, which is a dead letter, we should recognize, first of all, that since 48 and then since 67 expanded, mm, yeah. we've had one state. Mm. It just hasn't been a very good state in many ways. So our objective should be, let's make the one state better. And we have to have a lot of building stones for that because we have to change, we have to have opinions of the populations Jewish and Palestinian change. How do we do that? We have to emphasize something that has appeal to most people. We have to emphasize human rights and violations of human rights. And if we have to work Fight step, against violations fighting them. against yeah. them and yeah. let's specify them, violations on all sides. I think that it's not equally balanced. There are many more violations of Palestinian human rights, but let's say on both sides, if we talk about that, that will have appeal, I think, mm -hmm. to both of those populations, and that has appeal around the world. Yeah. And if you can start to do something about that, mm -hmm. you can start to change opinions, and unless the opinions mm -hmm. of those two populations mm -hmm. change, mm -hmm. then we aren't going to have anything that even comes close to or resembles a peace process. What if we could take it, uh, an example? I had a lot of friends, Vernon Bellicor, the Mary Indian Movement. We had, a, we had a manifest destiny concept that informed uh, the United States as it grew across and encountered a, another civilization. And uh, it was inherent in the, in the realpolitik sense of the word that the industrially advanced uh, entity with Gatling guns and the will uh, power in order to assert their power in terms of uh, a notion of uh, whoever's got the gun rules, that sort of thing, and that one civilization takes over another, and then that what the, uh, the ability of the conquered nation, one of the first laws of international law, or one of the principles, is the right of conquest. You've got to have had the right of conquest because people have been conquesting, winning others, and then having them, by PR and other kinds of ways, brought around and, and, and civilizations built. Why does that model not apply in terms of what you're saying? Uh, the Israelis and the Jews won, so they've got a right to establish their principles the same way the United States has established the principle here in the North America relating to the aboriginal people but, who were not as willing to or able to assert their own rights. Let so me give, why does real politics let, not wait, wait, wait. apply let, to Israel? Let me answer that briefly. Or how, what's the comparison? Let, and there are other examples wait, that could be let, built on that. A very brief answer. Right. If we go back to when Israel was created, 47 to 48, mm -hmm. there were at least 750,000 Palestinians who were pushed off their land, yeah. who were pushed off their land, and now that population has multiplied a few <coughs> times because uh, they're now into the third generation yeah. and many of them are in refugee camps. Right. And that's the indig that was the indigenous population. Go and tell those people and the children and the grandchildren that they should accept 
what happened to them because here come these people and they do this to them. Well, what about the Sioux Indian? What about the Indians what? who were just listen, uh, conquered by listen. the stronger force of history? Look. That's a principle that's held throughout that, history. Whoever's got the gun Number win. one, number one. If we use such an analogy, yeah, that that's doesn't called make it, wait, no. that's all. So that doesn't make it right. No. And if you're going to argue mm. that might makes it right, well, then you have another major big problem. Okay. I don't believe that. Oh, you do you not. Have, no, you no, don't think so. No. You don't I, think no, it is I don't think might should be no. No, I didn't say should. You're talking should no, and that no. it has. Wait, wait. Not all the look, now we have all of these revolutions that we started talking You're about right, right. that are breaking out against that might. Uh, but let me put it this way. Well, let's come, okay. wait. Yeah, yeah. Let's, pick, let's look at this example. Mm. We have 5.7 million Jews who are in the state of Israel. Yeah. The state of Israel exists in the whole Arab Middle East. Right. Okay. Now, and there are about as many Palestinians now in that state as there are Jews, and their birth rate is far greater than the Jewish birth rate. And then we have all the other Arabs, almost all of whom are terribly opposed to Israel. Well, Wait, all together, all together, well, the Jewish population then is maybe two to two and a half percent of the population, and they have established a country that antagonizes. 97 plus percent of all the people in the area You're right, and the is Palestinian it. population yeah, yeah. is growing mm -hmm. is growing mm -hmm. and that po and that Palestinian population will in time be far larger than the Jewish population well who's to say that those Jews are uh, uh, the superpower uh, are th 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 that they're going to be well, safe let me put it I this admit, way that's let me put it this the way Sioux Indians. let me yeah. put it this way that's the different. argument the mm. argument for the Zionist movement mm. before the state was created was mm. we need a Jewish state <laughs> because that's Security. the only place uh, that's the only <laughs> place the Jews will be safe from okay. anti-semitism now now, yeah. now since the state of Israel has existed mm -hmm. and increasingly, what do we hear every year from the Israeli government and from other Israeli spokespeople mm -hmm. when they go around again to get money and support in other ways for Israel? Even their argument the is, States. wait, wait, no. their argument is, help us because we Jews are living in the most unsafe place <laughs> yeah, for right, Jews right, in the world. Right, now, right. it can't be the safest place, as, the, as Zionists uh, has told uh, us, and the most and, unsafe place the at sanctuary. the same time. Yeah. At the, so, uh, I'm saying, if you're an Israeli, and there are plenty of Israeli Jews, mm. who if you, if you go on the street and mm. you ask them, mm. what do you consider to be the biggest problem, the biggest Jewish problem, uh, they will probably tell you demography. They're concerned with this population growth. Now, let, before we're done, let me say a few things uh, about what I've been working on myself for a long time, yeah. and that's the, re, the Jewish religious basis here All right. of this whole business. We, yeah. this, okay. In fact, I brought this along. Okay, this let, is let a, me hold it up. Let me hold it okay. up. Okay. This Go is ahead. a Go this ahead. is the current issue of a scholarly journal that's titled Religious Studies I understand and Theology. There's a young Mizvinsky yes, in, in fact, uh, my grandson and I Hallelujah. have the lead article in there yeah. on the heart of the Ultra religious right. Yeah, but the who was the major? Who was the wait, major wait. contributor? Was it Norton or was it this kid? Who was the major voice? Listen. There's always a major voice. Uh, no, no. Here, <laughs> listen. I'm kidding. The grandfather and the grandson <laughs> both worked on that. Oh, right? a combination. And yeah. since the grandson Hands is across since the, the grandson is only a freshman yeah. now uh, at Johns Hopkins right. University, yeah. he has a scholarly yeah. article yeah. as a freshman. All right, good. The, okay. the grandfather likes I think that. The, yeah, but right. anyway, <laughs> anyway, anyway, and that's not but, the point. But to, uh, the point uh, is, mm, the point is this. Yeah, yeah. We wrote it on Chabad Lubavitch, a major ultra-religious group. Uh, that's right. Here? That's yeah. the, that's yeah. that's the great yeah. Rebbe who died in '94. Mm. Yeah. But anyway, we wrote it. We called it "Eyes Upon the Land" because that's their position in regard to the state. Mm. But that's the position. That's the heart of the major, not totally, but the major ultra-orthodox grouping that is very important in the state of Israel and also in the United States. Really? Yes, okay. and uh, putting it very briefly, we discuss it in depth 
mm -hmm. in this article, right. but putting it, putting it very briefly, okay, yeah. the great majority of, or, of orthodoxy mm -hmm. was terribly anti-Zionist, mm -hmm. opposed to the creation of the state before the state came into existence. They wanted to there know. Was, they wanted, wait, yes, there was a minority group that was different, but the their major argument was they made two major arguments Where's against the Zionism. Mashiach? That's right. They said first of all, that's a pretty big one. Wait that's a minute. Going yes, wait a minute. Years. That's number one. Yeah. Wait. They said first of all, the Mashiach or the Messiah. Mm. For us to get, and they quoted the Talmud on yeah, this. Yeah, right. They said. Uh, uh, we won't have a Jewish state until the Messiah comes. Well, that was and a actually, part of the wait, and yeah. actually, mm. it's Talmudic that there are some oaths that were taken mm. that it would even be a sin uh, for Jews a blasphemy. to wait, uh, uh, a blasphemy right, for them the to try to order. establish a state before, before the Messiah. But, uh, that's number one. That's number a blasphemy two. of the uh, highest uh, yes, order yes, in the Jewish wait, tradition, but, thousands of yes, years. Yes, but let's go Not on. Not a small it. matter. Yes, okay, mm. no. The second thing was they said that mo that the Zionist leaders were, for the great most part, all secularists. Yeah. Ma many were atheists. So they said, "How? Th that's not their concept of a Jewish state." They mm -hmm. opposed it terribly. Yeah. Now that then the state of Israel came, but there was a minority group, and they didn't want to disagree theologically. Yeah. So they said, "We've entered the messianic era." And since we've entered the Messianic era and Moshiach, the Messiah, uh -huh. is on the verge of coming, we can be involved in doing this. That sounds they, like a wait, Monty, no, uh, three uh, wait, card Monty wait, wait. They were a striking minority. Mm. But then we come to the state of Israel. Yeah. And when the state is created, then the majority of these Orthodox Jews who were anti-Zionist, mm. they didn't say they'd become Zionist, but they said now... We support the state, the Natura Carta, and you've had Natura yeah. Carta people. Yeah, uh, you've more. interviewed yeah. Yeah, them right. before. They've held they, the, they've the held, old time religion. They've held steady, uh -huh. but let's take the rest. They're the only let's, ones that wait, have. Wait, well, well, pretty much uh, uh, that Orthodox, uh, more, that prophetic tradition, like Constantine in the third well, century. All right, but wait, they've given yes, up on the but prophetic tradition. Let me tradition. come to uh, now, but but now, but what's important? In terms of today, mm -hmm. since the since the religious element is so important, mm -hmm. it's how they have those who change their position yeah. have done it, yeah. and the clearest expression right. came from whom you mentioned, uh, Rabbi Menachem Schneerson, yeah. who was the seventh and the last of the Lubavitcher Rebbe's, but he represents this, that's the most dynamic. Well, they were trying to relate that's him the as, most, I that's thought, the I, most, I, wait, they come up, the wait, Mitzvah mobile, wait, wait are you All Jewish? Right, wait. Yes, yes. Yeah. wait a minute, wait. That's, that is the most dynamic Jewish group anyway, yeah. but, but, but the position he came up with yeah. is uh, the major religious right position, and here it is. Oh. He said he he made a distinction. Yeah. Okay. Between the state mm -hmm. and the land. Okay. And he said, yes, we won't have the Jewish state, and we shouldn't say that we're going to have the Jewish state uh -huh. per se uh -huh. until the Messiah comes, uh -huh. but. We now have control of the land, yeah. and if we Jews have control of the Holy Land, we shouldn't give one inch of it to any of our enemies, and all the Arabs are our enemies. It, and so, wait, so yeah. he, for example, mm. when we had Camp David in mm. 1979, right. reflecting this view, oh. he opposed Camp David, and he opposed even giving the Sinai, which goes beyond yeah. what was really the promised land sum, oh. to Egypt. So uh, their position is you shouldn't do that, and they have become, many of them have become, some of the most rabid uh -huh. anti-Arab people and influential in that regard uh -huh. within and outside the state of Israel. How have so they, they made in? this distinction. Yeah. But if have I mean, they re have they have they talked the English the language dictionary people? Have they talked yes, anything? How can they pull such a a, a shell game? On, uh, on terms well, of political legitimacy you, based if upon you one, ask the if, land or the wait, state. All right. If you are as you are asking me, yeah. then my answer... It's a shell game. Wait. My answer would be it's 
an extremity of hypocrisy. Oh, well, well okay. I mean, uh, self delusion uh, or well, political expediency I don't for think, money, for listen. power, for influence, for whatever, you no. know. It, it, it seems like a uh, we can an own, abandonment uh, no, of the of the responsibility wait, of keeping wait, wait, the wait, next wait, year wait, wait, you know the we prophetic can only, tradition. We can only we can only make guesses mm. about the motivation. Mm. We can only make guesses mm. if you ask, as I have. They seem a happy wait, people. Wait a minute, mm. but if you ask mm. followers of Schneerson himself, mm. wait, it, yeah, I don't know. If you ask. Followers of Schneerson himself, mm -hmm. they will say, no, 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 there hasn't been a change because he is still citing what they call the halakha, or the code of Jewish law uh, that goes to the Bible and God. But as there they were those, some it. of those people but thought, wait, they thought but he wait, was Mashiach. But wait, there well, no, that's, let's not get to that uh, uh, yet. Uh. All right. But, 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 mm. but, you can, but if we're guessing, Mm. We can make some other guesses. Okay. Schneerson was very bright. Yeah. Schneerson, after all, became the head. He became the Lubavitcher Rebbe oh. shortly after the state of Israel came into existence. He followed his father-in-law, mm -hmm. and he recognized then that, like it or not, I don't like it, yeah. but like it or not, the great majority of Jews whom they want to appeal to, were fully in favor of the state of Israel. Mm -hmm. So did that influence him? Because he would like to spread uh, what he considers to be his and the Lubavitch interpretation among Jews. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So that, I, yeah. we can yeah. guess yeah. that that's a motivating factor. Yeah. But what I'm saying is that even though we guess about motiva what motivated him, uh -huh. clearly mm -hmm. there was this change mm -hmm. and they only have tried to justify it by saying, well, there's the state and there's the land, and they also say if you ask them, mm. are you Zionist? Yeah. They say, no, we're still anti-Zionist, mm. but they are among the major supporters of the state of Israel and what the state of Israel has done since 48 and what the state of Israel is doing presently. Yeah. So there you have it. Well, that's what you call having your cake and eating it too, it seems no, it's, to me, it's, in terms of the prophetic tradition. Well, I would only say, I would only... Um, uh, a go, minimal. Uh, that, that's I, I would only put it this thing. way. It's that's wanting to have your cake yeah. and eating it also. Okay, what's, uh, okay, and what's the reality of all of this in terms of what's likely to emerge over the next... Uh, year, 10 years, and so forth, in terms of these religious, different interpretations of this. Look, What's the, the future the problem of is the Jewish the state? Well, all right. Uh, uh, quickly, uh, there are, I'll give you two answers. One answer is with these religious, these people, by the way, believe that this is the holy land for Jews mm -hmm. because God promised it to the Jews. Yeah. Now, so their authority is God. Mm. People who sincerely believe that they have the word of God, then it not only is difficult, if they really believe yeah, it, that's it's impossible yeah, yeah. to change their mind. That's right. That's, that's right. a huge problem. Yeah, right. But on the other hand, if we look at Israel and we, we look at Israeli Jews, probably only 25% of Israeli Jews are really religious mm -hmm. in this way. So, religious. so. That's right. A lot of so they us. may. So the majority, they probably aren't going to really believe that they that they're here because God gave them the land. Mm -hmm. They're there. They believe about security and so on. So I'm saying here, I think we can, if we want to look to the future. Yeah. And unfortunately, Israeli governments have been near term in their approach, not longer term, and uh -huh. what's best for them, let alone uh -huh. others. Yeah. We can say that well. There is hope, and I come back to what I said before, uh -huh. that if we emphasize human rights yeah. and if we em emphasize what should be the case mm -hmm. for all people and we sh we're against human rights violations, Violation. yeah. that I'm saying we can have some hope that in time, and this has already started to happen, okay. that opinions of Israeli Jews and also uh, different kinds of opinions that are antagonistic on the Palestinian side can indeed change to make us, that, to bring us to a position where 
resolution of this conflict is possible. Will it That's be then, all. Would you then have to give up on the idea of saying it's a Jewish state? Yeah, of course you yeah, have to give that give up. Give up on the apartheid of, of that? Of course you have to and give that that's up. that's sort of a rather big thing that no. has motivated Wait the a Zionist minute. enterprise, yes, doesn't it you, not? Uh, yes, no. that's right, and that's a and big job. And what about job. the support of the Jewish community in New York and in the United States, and what are they Listen, thinking about this? First and, of all, the, idea of, so you want the idea of a Jewish state. That's the big nut to crack. Mm -hmm. That's rather have, a large wait, one. Wait, you know? yes, mm -hmm. but that you can work on changing the opinions. Mm -hmm. In terms of that's Jewish, based, wait, if I may, that's based on the inherent belief by people that it is built into the human society. Anti-Semitism is built in by God uh, to the human society. No, well, or, uh, well such a, no, but wait. But let's go to the other part of your of, of your answer. Okay. Uh, since since we have about as many Jews in the United States as we have in the state of Israel, yeah. and maybe two or three million more around the world. Yeah. Not much more than yeah. that. Yeah. Kind of small. Most right? of yeah. fifteen. The estimate is about fifteen to sixteen million Jews in the world. Total. Yeah. In the total world. Right. 5.7 in Israel, maybe up to 6 million in the United States. That's almost 12. So there you are. They, Fit now, now. Yeah. But the point is, most of the Jews in the diaspora, if there's a change in public opinion of Jews in the state of Israel, then I'd say, don't worry. The Jews in the rest of the world, they're going to follow that. Listen, they well, have not... They most of them. Most, most of, of what them. Are you, I got most, mixed up. What? Most. Uh, let's take the U.S. Okay. Most American Jews. Mm -hmm. For them, Israel is not a top priority uh, at all. Uh, the Israeli government has, since it came into existence, stressed what they call Aliyah, that yeah, all Jews yeah, should yeah, come, have to, to come. Yeah. Terribly few. Yeah. Not only few American Jews it's have gone. It's the most gone, dangerous place in the wait, world. Have to be gone. Wait a minute. One, yeah. Very few of the Zionist leaders who argue here so much for the state mm. have ever done Aliyah and gone mm. there to live. That's right. So. We don't have. To, we have to worry uh, about the opinions of Israeli Jews, mm. and then the others are going to. They're going to change as the Israeli Jews. So, change. what are we going to call this new country? What's the name of the new country it you're going to propose? You can call Utopia? it anything. No. Yeah. You no. can call it whatever you want. Mm. You can call it Israel Palestine. You can call it Palestine Israel. Israel pa you can, you can, you, you can you, uh, uh, but it, it can't be a it can't be a Jewish state. Mm -hmm. It sh it's not going to be a Palestinian state uh -huh. uh, uh, that's going to do the same. But it thing. will not be Wait. Israel. No, it'll well, be the end of the state of Israel look, as it's been even promulgated. If, look, it doesn't matter what, what your name is. It doesn't matter. But in reality, even yeah, even yeah. if you had the name Israel, you can call it Israel if it's not a Jewish state. A Jewish state means that by law, and this is what it is by law, Jews are granted rights and privileges not granted to non-Jews. That would have to go to and so with the end of this program. We're out of time on okay. this program. Nice. The tyranny <laughs> of time. The prophetic tradition lives. That's a good Your way to pleasure end pleasure for Norton Mizrinsky, distinguished professor. Thank you for coming back again tomorrow. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for such a good, well-led life and for all the good work. Uh, we're coming back tomorrow. Please tune in. And once again, Norton, so good to see you. Got to get together. Thank you. I want to introduce you to the new dog. Okay. I, I'll, oh, I'll oh, come oh. over. Okay, good. Okay. Thank you very much.